Good morning. Welcome. We welcome you to Beulah Baptist Church on uh, this Sunday, June 20th, the, um, the longest day of the year. How about that? Today and tomorrow, the longest day of the year, the longest day of sunshine, I should say. So uh, what a wonderful day to gather together to worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, we just uh, direct a Please take the time to read uh, the bulletin. We are uh, uh, slowly but surely getting back to uh, a sense of uh, normalcy. And uh, you see our uh, Sunday school classes that are currently being taught. Uh, you also uh, uh, see that um, we're, we're looking to uh, begin the, the nursery ministry again. So if uh, you have a... Uh, a calling to uh, uh, be a part of uh, taking care of uh, uh, little people, then uh, please uh, see, see Sandra Kersey about, uh, about that. Also, uh, the sanctuary flowers today provided by Bill and Ann Pleasance in honor of their 50th wedding anniversary. You are to be congratulated, commended, in uh, um, 50 years. That's a testimony indeed to uh, your faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in his, in his blessings and everything. Um, I got a little something up here. This is something that Judy and I are giving back to the church. Um, years ago, this church didn't have electricity. It had oil lamps, okay? The way I understand it, above every one of the columns here, there was an oil lamp. And when the church was electrified, the oil lamps were taken down. Certain members of the church, certain families of the church, and I don't know whether they, John, I don't know whether they drew lots or, uh, <laughs> or what, Bob? They were sold at auction the Okay, they were sold at, au at auction. Okay, anyway, um, we came by this via Sam and Rose Francis Ball. And so um, we re returned this to the church. And you may want to auction it off again. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it, it belongs to the church. It is a pot, part of the church's history and heritage. And um, as we uh, return this, if you will, to its rightful owner, uh, the church, uh, we also return it with the admonition that, that uh, Jesus said, uh, you are the light of the world. We reflect his light. Let your light shine. And so that's a reminder to each and every one of us to let the light and the love of Jesus Christ shine in our lives. So y'all can decide what you want to do, but it rightfully belongs to the church and for the church to dispose of it. So. We commend that to you. Are there any other announcements this morning? Any other announcements? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, what a great day to worship you. Lord, you give us life, and we are thankful for it. But even more than the life that we experience, the eternal life, that you give us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, how thankful we are for that. And so this day, Lord, let us gather here to worship you, to lift you up, and to praise your name. For it is in the wonderful, glorious name of Jesus Christ that we pray, amen. Our opening hymn today is hymn number 352. This 
is Father's Day. And so we sing this hymn, number 352, Faith of Our Fathers. And we're, I believe it's, what is it, three, three hymn, uh, stanzas, and we will sing all three of them. I invite you to stand as we sing. Please be seated. Let us unite our hearts together in prayer at this time. O oh Lord our God, how wonderful it is to lift up our hearts, our voices, our minds, our, our souls to you this day. Lord, how good it is to talk to you in prayer. How good it is to call you Father. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for being the one who brought us into being, who created us. It is by your will that we exist. And Lord, we are thankful for the life that you have given to us. We are thankful, O oh Lord, for the, the, the gift of life. To experience all of the joy and the pleasures and the blessings that comes from living and living in relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, for being our Heavenly Father. Thank you for Christ Jesus who has shown us that indeed you are Father. Our Lord Jesus, who, who taught us to pray to our Father. Our Lord Jesus, who said, I and the Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. How thankful we are that, Lord, that, that Christ Jesus reveals that God is indeed our Heavenly Father. Lord, how thankful we are for thy Holy Spirit. For through your Holy Spirit, you draw near to us. Through your Holy Spirit, you, you touch our hearts and our lives. Through your Holy Spirit, you commune with our spirits to draw you close to you. Thank you, Lord, for thy Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful, awesome God you are. And we acknowledge that this day. Lord, even as we praise you and even as we thank you for the many blessings of life, we come to you with concerns. Lord, we, we lift up 
those that we know and are aware of who are dealing with illnesses. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, for, Lord, first for your presence to be with those individuals. Lord, we can deal with an awful lot in life in our own strength, but Lord, there's some things we just can't cope with apart from you. And quite frankly, Lord, there's a lot in life that we just really, we, we can't deal with it by ourselves, but with you walking alongside of us, with you leading and guiding us and, and, and holding us upright, Lord, we can deal with it. And so, Lord, I pray that you would be with those uh, who are dealing with illness and be with family members, Lord, who walk alongside of them. Lord, we lift up uh, our lives to you in the midst of a, uh, of a world that is changing. And changing rapidly seems like each and every day. But Lord, we are thankful that you are a God who is more than enough to deal with the changes in life and helping us to deal with the changes. And we're thankful that of the scripture that tells us that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And how thankful we are that you are our rock upon which we can anchor our lives. Thank you, Lord, for that. Oh, Lord, thank you and we praise you, the God from whom all blessings flow. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we come now to a time of giving of our tithes and our offerings, that, Lord, we would be mindful of how you have blessed us, how you have loved us, and that, Lord, we would give accordingly. May our gifts be a reflection of our hearts and our love for you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We do come now to the time of our presentation of tithes and offerings. I would ask that uh, those who would be receiving the offering at this time or bringing the offering down will make preparations for that. And we will have, uh, I invite you to stand as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us stand. Be seated, please. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of beginnings, the book of Genesis, chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. Genesis 12, verse 1. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. 
So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. And they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. And from there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the east and Ai on the, the uh, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord may we hear God's word and may it become a truth that leads us in our lives today is father's day and this morning we look at an individual, a biblical individual. His, his moniker is that he is the father of faith. Abraham. Abraham is a model of faith. Now our sermon title is The Challenge of Change. And if anyone was a model of faith during times of change, it was Abraham. We are living in times of change. We are living in times of social change, economic change, political change. You name it, it's changing. Beulah Church is entering into a time of change. Personally, we are all dealing with change. This past week, Judy and I moved into a new home. And things that we have taken for granted for 38 years, it's like everything's changed. I went to throw away some trash. I went into the kitchen. I opened the counter underneath the sink. For 38 years, there's been a trash can there. There's no trash can there anymore. It's in a different place. It's changed. And there's a lot of stuff like that that we're discovering, that I'm discovering. It's changed. It ain't where it used to be. It ain't going to be there. Get used to the change. Get used to it. Changes. I don't like change. <laughs> But life is change. Life is change. Brian Harbour has said, sometimes we turn to God when our foundations are shaking. That's, change feels like that at times, doesn't it? Like, like the foundations of life are shaking. And, and, and Brian Harbour says, sometimes we turn to God when our foundations are shaking only to find that God is shaking them. Sometimes the changes that take place in life are God initiated, God ordained. So it was with Abraham. So it is with us. God comes to Abraham and he says, Leave. Leave your country your relatives, your father's home. Leave. Leaving is not easy. There's a scene from my childhood that is etched in my memory. 
we were engaging. I've shared with you, with you all that in, in growing up, our family moved quite a bit because of my father's work. We, were generally, we generally lived 18 months to, to two years in a place, and then we'd move on to another job where my father would be, be working. Uh, of 12 years of school, I went to 10 different schools. That's how much we moved. Sometimes moving twice in the same year. But in the fall of 1964, we were moving from Somerset, Massachusetts to El Paso, Texas. And I'll never forget this, this image in my mind because the movers were packing up everything at the house and I looked over and sitting over on the curb was my brother who was about four years old at the time, a four-year-old brother with his best friend and they had their arms around each other, just a crying, just a crying. Leaving, leaving. It's not easy. It's a hard thing to do. Imagine Abraham. Put yourself in Abraham's shoes for a second. God comes to Abraham and he says, leave. Leave your country. Hmm. Leave your relatives. Leave your father's house. That's, that's the most intimate, closest of, of family. That's hard. God, God's digging up Abraham's roots. But you see, what God was saying here to Abraham was, Put your faith and your future in me. Now you think about that for a minute. Because we, we have a tendency as human beings to put our faith into worldly things, don't we? Things that we have, have, have fashioned, uh, uh, things that we have accomplished, things that we have, have done. But God is saying to Abraham, and God say, is saying to us also, put your faith in me. Trust your future with me. That's what he's saying to each and every one of us. That, my friends, is what we need to do with our lives, to put our lives in God's hands and trust him completely. I've shared with you a statement by C.S. Lewis. He says, there are far better things ahead than any we leave behind. When God is in the leaving, you can say that and you can do it. God says to Abraham, leave. Secondly, God says, go. Go to a land that I'm going to show you. Now, you know, that, this is something that happens throughout the scriptures. How many times have we read accounts of God coming to someone and, and, and virtually the first thing that God says is, go, go. Go to a land I'm going to show you. It's an invitation. It's an invitation to go. Notice I said invitation. God invites us to engage with him in his divine plan and purpose. And more often than not, that involves going. Going. City Slicker was lost on a country back roads. And as he was driving, trying to figure out the directions to get to his destination, he saw a country gentleman who was rocking on the front porch, and so he stopped to ask directions. Obviously, this is an old story. He didn't have GPS. Well, the country farmer listened to what he said, and then he drawled, you can't get there from here. 
My father used to say that a lot. You can't get there from here. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, sometimes, sometimes in life, for the destination, you can't get there from here. You've got to go. You've got to move. You've got to go somewhere else as your point of reference or as your starting point in order to get to your final destination. And that's part of what God is saying here to Abraham. God calls Abraham to join him. But Abraham is going to have to go because he can't get there from where he's at. We have to go. Remember Isaiah's calling? God says, whom shall I send and who will go? And Isaiah said, here my Lord, send me. And then God says, go and say to this people. Do you remember the, the message that the disciples heard from the angels at the empty tomb? There was the invitation, come and see. And then there was what? The imperative, go and tell. Go. God says to Abraham, go to a land that I, that I will show you. Go, sight unseen. Sight unseen. God will show the way. Trust in me, God says. I've shared with you all the story before of a fellow who kind of uh, stalled and delayed on his uh, feeding of the farm animals. Evening came and it got dark and the father called him on it and he said, you know, have you fed up? And he said, well, no, I haven't. And he said, well, you need to go on out. Well, it's dark out there. And he said, well, yeah, here's a lantern. Go on out and feed up. And he said, but it's just a lantern. I can't see the barn from here. He says, you don't need to see the barn. He said, follow the light as you can. It will ultimately direct you to the barn and show you the way. See, that's faith. That's faith. God doesn't always show us the end of the journey, does he? To be quite frank, that's probably a good idea. He says, go in faith. Take it one step at a time. I'll show the way. I'll light the way. You'll eventually get there. But go and trust in me. Someone has said, fear not tomorrow. God is already there. Think about that. When God says go, God, God's not just saying go and pushing us out the door. God's already there. God's already there. Go. John Claypool makes a very, I think, very in insightful observation. And he got this from a friend of his uh, who was um, dealing with a terminal illness. And Claypool talked to the gentleman and was asking him, now, how, how do you feel about all of this? And the gentleman made, made a very interesting statement. He says, well, this is kind of the way that I look at it. He said, every exit is also an entrance. 
Every exit is also an entrance. He said that at his friend's funeral, at the end of the funeral as they were carrying out the casket, it went through the door there at the back of the sanctuary and he said he couldn't help but smile and grin because there on the door, it said what? Exit. But you see, we as believers, we as Christians, we, we believe that with respect to eternity. Yes, at the end of the, this road of life when we die, yes, on this side it looks like an exit, doesn't it? But on the other side, it's an entrance. It's an entrance. It's that way not just with death, but it's that way with, with, with so many other things in life. You know? A wedding, a marriage, well, it's an exit. You're exiting the single life. You're, you're exiting life in the family that you grew up, but what is, what's, what's, what's unfolding? There's an entrance into a new life and a new partnership and a new joy. Do you see? For every exit, there's also an entrance. For every command of God that says go, there's also on the other side that opportunity and that invitation come. God says to Abraham, go. But we know that that's simply an invitation, an invitation to a wonderful opportunity, an entrance into a new life in a new way. Next, after he says, leave and go, comes a promise from God. And this promise is threefold. He says, if you leave and if you go, number one, I will give you. God's going to give him something. We know that God was going to give him land. We know that God was going to give him descendants. And quite frankly, though, all of this is predicated upon the fact that God is, 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 is going to give him a wonderful, unique, intimate relationship with him. I will give you, God says. You cannot outgive God. Do I hear an amen to that? Amen. You cannot outgive God. God is a great giver. Some 40 years ago, and I've, sh I've shared this with you before, but it's one of those things that happened in my life that was very formative. 40 years ago, I resigned my, my job, and I entered seminary. My roommate, I'll never forget, as we were getting to know one another, and we were sitting in, in our, our, our room there at the dorm, the seminary, and we're chatting, and we're, we're basically sharing our spiritual pilgrimage with one another. Um, and anyway, I'll never, I'll never forget Keith, my brother Keith. He pointed to the closet there in the room. It was a relatively small closet. And he said, everything I own in life is in that closet. Well, that just blew me away. That just blew me away. But at the end of seminary, I too could point to that closet and say, everything that I own in this world 
is in that closet. And some of you know that. Buddy Rice helped to move me into the parsonage some 38 years ago, and there wasn't a whole lot to move into that parsonage back then. <clears throat> I think there was a bed and a mattress, and that was pretty much it. <clears throat> mm. That was an easy move. <clears throat> That's not the end of the story, though, because over the years, I have received untold blessings. The blessings aren't material blessings. The blessings are the relationships that we've had. The blessings are the friendships Folks, that's priceless. That's priceless. Cultivate your relationships in this church with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's priceless. It's priceless. You know, the world is looking for that. The world is looking for that. And there are very few places where you can find it today. And there's only one place where you can really and truly find it, and that is in the church of the living God. Amen? Amen. So cultivate your relationships with one another. Treasure them. It has been a blessing to share life with you. Marriages, births, successes, just walking through life together has been a blessing. All blessings come from God. All blessings come from God. God said to Abraham, and he says to us, I will give. The greatest gift is walking with God on a wondrous journey. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You have the assurance of that promise through Jesus Christ. God says, I will give. And then he says, I will make you. I will make you. He says to Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. Well, there's something... That, that goes even far deeper than that. We are made by God, and God makes us. Do you remember Jesus? Do you remember when he walked along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, and he called his disciples? And do you remember he said, follow me, and I will make you to become fishers of men? Jesus is in the process of making us. Some people take pride in being a self-made man. But the best thing of all, my friends, is to be a God-made man. Abraham was a God-made man. As a matter of fact, when he tried to control or run his life, all he did was run into trouble. But when he turned his life over to God, he was blessed. Blessed is the man, blessed is the woman, blessed is the person who allows God to mold and make them into what God wants them to be. And I share with you the words of Ted Adams that I have so often. You will make the most of your life by allowing Jesus Christ to make the most of you. And then God says, I will bless you. The greatest blessing is God's presence in your life. Abraham walked with God. Jesus said to us, Lo, I am with you always. God's blessings are not to be kept and hoarded, but to be shared. God says that he's going to bless Abraham, but that's not, the, that's not the end of it. He says, what? So that 
you will be a blessing. And he says, through you, I will bless all nations. And we know the rest of the story because we've got the New Testament in our hands. Ultimately, the Savior, Jesus Christ, a descendant of Abraham, would come and would be the blessing for all mankind, for all humanity. Through you shall all nations, shall all people be blessed. There's a sense in which that's a, that's a prophecy right there that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Because it is through Jesus that ultimately we are blessed. God's blessings are beyond the scope of our imagination. God blesses us in order that we can be a blessing to others. I was talking to my dear friend, Buddy Parrish, pastoring now in Orlando, Florida. I shared with him of my retirement. And his, his words to me were, were something of a commission for retirement. He said, I don't know what God has in store for you in retirement. But I do know you're not going to retire from ministry. He said, God has plans for you to be a blessing to others for his sake. And so, I continue to look for opportunities to be a blessing to others for Jesus' sake. Whether that's getting to know my new neighbors. And I got a lot of neighbors. <laughs> got a lot of neighbors. And uh, that's part of the adventure, folks. How can I be a blessing today for Jesus' sake? Now that's part of your adventure in life also. That's part of your adventure. How can you be a blessing to others for Jesus' sake? You know, God's still coming to people just like he came to Abraham. And he's still coming to people. And he's still coming and he says, leave. Go. I'm going to show. I will give you. I will make you. I will bless you so that you may be a blessing to others. Abraham responded to God in faith. When God calls you, may you do likewise. Let's pray. Oh Lord, how thankful we are for the opportunity to respond to the challenge of change. We recognize, O oh Lord, change is a part of life. We don't realize it, Lord, but we're constantly changing. Help us, O oh Lord, to be faithful unto you in all of the changes of life. The changes that are imposed upon us, yes, by the world. But help us, O oh Lord, also to be faithful to the changes that you offer to us also. And Lord, may we, like Abraham, 
respond to you in faith and obedience and assurance, knowing that you will never leave us nor forsake us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is hymn number 285. One of my favorite hymns. Wherever he leads, I'll go. This day is God reaching out his hand and leading you. Is God reaching out to you saying, come unto me. Follow me. Accept me as your Lord and Savior. And walk with me in faith, in obedience, and love. This day, would you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This day, would you rededicate your life to him? Saying, I want to walk closer. I want a deeper walk with my Lord. I want to be more fully committed to him. And uh, I want to respond to him with a deep faith. Would you rededicate your life? Would you become a part of the family of faith here at Beulah Baptist Church? You're a believer, but you feel like, yeah, Ed, what you were talking about earlier about this church being a family uh, and the people who are blessings to one another, I, I've sensed that, and I want to be a part of this family of faith. We invite you to come as we sing, wherever he leads, I'll go. Let us stand as we sing together.
already we've had those who come. Would anyone else come this day, responding to the leadership of the Lord? Just this last verse, verse one. Verse one. church. Lucas Williams comes forward this day, wanting to become a part of the family of faith here at Beulah Baptist Church. He has said that he is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and so he, he publicly professes uh, the Lordship of Jesus Christ before you this, this, uh, this morning, and uh, he's not been baptized, so he uh, uh, is coming, uh, agreeing to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, Lucas, what a wonderful decision that you have made this day. And we, uh, we commend you in that. Now, if you, as a family of faith here at Beulah Baptist Church, would affirm this decision that Lucas has made, would you make it known by saying, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Lucas, you see it. And now this guy. <laughs> Quentin Lipscomb comes forward this morning saying, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. And so uh, he comes forward this day professing Christ publicly and seeking to follow in believer's baptism. And, and I knew this was, I knew you were going to make this decision. <laughs> I knew it. I'm just glad you made it before I left. <laughs> I, I said to myself, if he just like him to do it the last Sunday that I'm here, <laughs> and maybe come back to, to baptize, but, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, next week, next week, we're going to have a baptism service here at Beulah Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. 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 And so, God bless you, brother. If you would affirm this decision that Quentin has made this morning, to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, to follow in believer's baptism, become a member of Beulah Baptist Church, which you make it known by saying, praise the Lord. Praise, praise, the, Lord. praise the Lord. Amen. Two friends, two friends coming together this morning. Wow. Wow. That, that, that's, it's just like Jesus called, called brothers. Called brothers, and they, they came together and they followed him. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful day to, to serve. And you're going to want to come forward. You're going to want to extend the right hand of fellowship to these young men and to say, we're, we are going to support you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to be there for you and uh, to, to grow up to be men of God, to be men of God and, and, and to be witnesses and to be leaders here in this church. Amen. 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 Cora, come up here and sit here. Stand with your husband. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Lucas, you come on and stand up. Sam, and I'm going to invite everybody else now to stand for our dismissal. <sighs> Ain't God good? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Lord, how thankful we are for this day. How thankful we are, Lord, for your reaching out to Lucas and to Quentin. And, Lord, that they've chosen this day to respond to you in faith. Lord, just like Abraham. Lord, may we all respond to you in faith just as Abraham did, just as those, those disciples did, and to walk with you in faith and newness of life. Lord, help us that we might continue to be 
a beacon of light to a community that is dark, that we might be a source of hope to those who are living in despair, that we might be a center of love in a world that only wants to hate. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you so much for the blessings of this day. And now, oh, Lord, help us to live simply, to love gently, to care deeply, to speak kindly, to pray daily, and leave the rest to you, our God. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen.